Good morning, business students. So, reading this article from City AM this morning, and I listened to this on the um, Times Radio this morning. Boohoo have uh, released their accounts, and they are struggling. Sales are down, um, and they are losing money. So, obviously, profitability. So, this is going to help us to revise part of 3.1.2. Um, Edexcel have listed this as Porter's generic matrix. Go very careful. Um, when I went to uni, it was this, but it's also known as generic matrix. Now, some students might get this mixed up with Ansoff matrix, and when we saw this in a past paper a couple of years ago, some people did actually answer it incorrectly. So uh, read the question properly. So this is what we know. This is the diagram that we would have seen in class. And we can see we've got scope and we've got source of competitive advantage. So we've got cost and we've got differentiation. And as we know, we've got cost leadership, differentiation, and then the two different focuses. Um, so really there's three aspects to this model. We also know that when we're talking about cost leadership, we don't just leap to therefore mass market and pass on the prices to um, encourage people to buy our cheap clothes, for example. We need to explain the chain of argument in context. Um, so if we're talking about cost leadership, it could be narrowing uh, the range of clothes using more generic designs, therefore making more of the same um, top therefore bringing down the cost of production per top and if we pass that on to price sensitive customers maybe they buy our top instead of going to Marks and Spencers who might be more expensive okay there's probably seven chains of argument there uh, we'll stick a quote in from the case study and we'll be happy and differentiation we should be talking about how it differentiates the brand against other brands okay hopefully there's mention of it in a case study um, so it's really important. The problem we talk about in class sometimes is when people, people, firms are a bit of mass, a bit of niche, a bit of everything for everyone, they're sort of lost in the middle here. And we talk about Tesco's, who are a highly successful brand that are sort of in the middle, um, and but they will look for the differentiation. So it's not just, oh, we're in the middle and we're happy with it. Uh, we need to differentiate. That might be the club card point system. It could be uh, Tesco mobile phones. It could be their pet insurance, all those sorts of things. So when we talk about Aldi's, they're, they're going down more the cost leadership. Remember, this is sort of on a spectrum. You're not just in one or the other. You could be here. You could be there. You could be sort of there. But as long as you describe it in context, then you'll be okay. Okay, so just make sure we are defining. So we're going to do a 20 marker on this in this video. So here's that stuck in the middle type thing, but stuck in the middle comes across as a negative connotation. And I don't really agree with that and neither does the theorists um, with this. If you're sort of lost in the middle, then actually what do you actually stand for? That confuses customers um, and actually damages your brand. But actually some companies will position themselves here on purpose and they will use that as their USP in some ways. Tesco's being the obviously exemplar here. So we've got our definitions here and if we think about cost leadership remember the chain of argument we need to explore. So yes it's the lower cost producer in the in the industry fashion industry in context with this case study uh, the goal is to offer the lowest prices and still make profit, okay? So if you're known as that low price and everyone else is low price, you're a bit stuffed really, aren't you? Because what differentiates you from other companies? And when you're in competition with Primani, for example, when I can actually go into a store and still see similar products to Boohoo, well, maybe that's why Boohoo are losing market share and they haven't got COVID on their side. So differentiation is obviously standing out from the competitors. Uh, it'd be nice if you talked about this. Now, we know differentiation could be linked to premium price, 
But in this case study, we're talking about boohoo. So this could be part of your counter argument. Normally with differentiation, we've got more ranges. We might have more focus on some of that differentiation focus for some of their range. Well, if it's differentiation, it makes it more niche. If it's more niche, maybe I'm selling less of them. Uh, and also if I'm labeled as a discounter in the fast fashion industry, then maybe I'm gonna to struggle to pass on premium prices to my customers. Okay, lots of maybes there. Nothing's definite in essays or we might accidentally write assertions. And we don't like assertions, do we students? Because that is mentioned in level two and we don't want eight out of 20, thank you very much. So if we're thinking about focus, and I don't think this, question, this case study that I'll show you talks about focus, but there might be elements of it. Um, but we might be focusing on certain market segments, certain demographics, certain countries, for example. Um, and we've got geographic area there, obviously linking into the theory from your textbook. So we're thinking more of that niche approach here. Um, and remember, in context with the theory, we would need to make sure we identify that from the case study. Now, we know that we are going to look at a mass market, fast fashion, pure play company here. Pure play being only available online. And we know this is about Boohoo. So before we go anywhere near a case study, we need to plan and we need to think about what we are going to define. But we'll plan this first. Um, and then we'll walk through um, a suggested answer, which isn't perfect, by the way, um, um, to end the video off. So Porter's strategic matrix, clearly I'm going to need to define that or aspects of, of that. So I'll stick a K above that for knowledge. Suggests that fashion retailers like Boohoo can grow sales of its online apparel. Yeah, so this is my context as such online apparel. Very important by either focusing on option one, differentiation, option two, cost leadership. Okay, so we need to identify the hook as well. So, so far we've got growth in sales. I'm guessing that's the hook, but normally what we see in 20 markers is they'll repeat the hook twice, which means they've said it twice, so make sure it goes on the end of your chain of argument in your conclusion and your justification um, and it's included in your mops that supports your justification. Evaluate these two options and recommend which one, not both, you can't have both. Um, you can mention how both might be important in your justification but you must recommend one or you ain't answering the question. Is the most important, so this is actually something we would see for our hook. Most important for the successful growth in sales. Up here, grow the sales. Down here, successful growth in sales. So the hook is this, and we know that it's online apparel. Okay, so apparel, fast fashion, clothes. I would expect to see some sort of reference in there. So we understand this is sales. This could be sales revenue per item. This could be sales revenue overall. This could be encouraging people to buy more stuff more frequently. I would be expecting to see some reference to this in an answer. So we know what we need to define. We've talked about the definitions already. So when I put up the case study, you need two bits of evidence for differentiation. One to support a positive, one to support a negative. Cost leadership, exactly the same. Once you've found your evidence, stop reading is my advice if you struggle for time and go and start writing. Okay, you'll probably have enough evidence. And remember, this is a 20 marker. So some of the answers, the evidence you've used from previous answers, you might be able to use in the 20 marker. Don't just think about these as independent answers. If we get the same themed papers as we've seen for the last two years, you can use some of the evidence from previous answers, especially if it's a cheeky calculate question um, about market share in fast fashion. Hey, that would be lovely for this one. Let's have a look. Here is the case study from City AM. Lots of quant stuff in here. Um, so those of you that are quick with a calculator, you can actually use a little bit of this. 
I've been quite lazy in my answer and I've not done the percentage changes and stuff like that. But top level application is using the data. Um, so it'd be quite nice if we used some of it. And I'm sure that some of you can email me your what went wells and EBIs for this one. Um, I have lifted this verbatim from the website. Apologize for plagiarism. Um, so you have got some technical language, but your business students, I'm sure that you can cope with depreciation and amortization. And if you don't understand what those key terms are, you might want to do a little bit of revision. Right, pause the video, plan your answer. And if I was you, from now, 24 minutes, then come back and press play. Did you pause the video? Let's hope so. So, just as a quick reminder, when I was looking through the case study, I was thinking about some quotes here. And I've not done two for each, because I'm sure you've done that. But we need to understand that actually, what would be the objective here? I know it's to do with boosting sales, but if it's to do with cost leadership, we know it's to become the industry's low cost provider. Yeah, we're thinking about streamlining, reducing cost, workforce reduction through automation. We've got that from the case study. Um, and, you know, we've, we've got, you know, a bit of an impact there as well from a quote. We've then got differentiation. And we're thinking about the highlight trend setting, high quality fashion of its brands. If that's what they perceive it is, then fine. As we can see by this chap's tracksuit, which is very tasteful. Um, I have the same tracksuit as a Dalmatian. We have highlighted highly loyal customer base. Well, if they're highly loyal, they might actually pay a little bit more and hopefully continue to buy your logo intensive um, tracksuits. So you have to think about this loyalty. And if it suddenly goes absolute cost leadership and streamlining, as in reducing the range, then maybe those loyal customers will become loyal customers for someone else. Not much to do with focus strategies in here, but it's worth mentioning if we were looking at for more niche, I might pop that into a counter, but really we're looking for pros and cons of cost leadership, pros and cons of differentiation. And just because I remember focus does not mean it's got any place in this essay. Don't lose um, focus on what the question is asking. So, a quick practice of our plan. We will define that, but really we're looking for option one, option two. So option one, my answer is done around the other way, but never mind. Um, and option two, I am going, pretend that's a two, I am going to define those. I will define, I've defined this first, then I'm going to stop. Then I'm going to go to the case study. I'm going to identify my evidence and I will come back. Now, by defining first before going to the case study, um, I'm looking for something to do with the low cost producer, ways that they're going to cost, cut costs. And I'm also going to be looking for something to do with price sensitivity of my customers, if I could speak. OK, two aspects, because that's what we're talking about with cost leadership. I'm then going to start writing my answers. Um, cost leadership is a strategy aimed at becoming the lowest cost producer. Um, and clearly, I've accidentally put that in twice, but never mind, it was so good. The advantage of, it, of adopting cost leadership is that it could increase Boohoo's sales, the hook, by appealing to price sensitive customers, a bit of application. In the competitive online fashion market context, lower prices can attract a larger customer base. Mm, reasonable chain of argument so far. Potentially increasing volume sales back to the hook again. Sort of a repeat though, yeah, but you know, it's there. A nice quote. Um, and we then using this lovely phrase, could be interpreted as another chain of argument. And also says, hi, examiner, look at me. I'm really clever. I'm interpreting the case study as that this strategy would help them increase sales. We've mentioned sales three times here. It's a bit repetitive. 
Um, I'm thinking, is there more than three chains of argument if I remove all the duplication? I think there's probably three in there, especially with the could be interpreted. Is it that magic five? Don't really think so, to be honest with you, but uh, we shall see where that fits into the marking grid in a bit. However, there might be a risk of compromising the quality when focusing on excessively on cost reduction. Okay, that's a textbook answer, isn't it? We could say that about any company. Let's see if it's contextualized. Lower cost might lead to inferior product quality. Product is bang from my classroom, thank you very much. Maybe cloth, clothing, dress, trousers, dodgy tracksuits, which can harm brand reputation and customer loyalty. Very abstract so far. The case study mentions, oh, now I'm a bit more excited, the use of generic materials, a bit more abstract, or less detailed designs, oh, that's not bad application, might result in cost cutting, or result from cost cutting, sorry, which might result in less sales, straight to the hook, to customers who want differentiated designs. It is in context, okay? Cost cutting, differentiated designs, but we could have easily put in there clothes, shirts, trousers, track suits. It takes just as long to write this, but this has got a minimum of three, I'm not sure about the five, and it's contextualized. Then we're on to differentiation, and we would start with our def definition, pause, then go to the case study and find something. But if we look at this definition, um, focused on making products unique and superior to those of competitors, nice to have that in there, justifying higher prices. Now we know what we're looking for in the case study. Write the definition, go and find your evidence, come back quickly, job done. Okay, just a recommendation for some of you that are struggling with accessing the whole case study for an entire 20 marker. Um, you'll notice that this is a very concise answer, um, so really aimed at those that do struggle to write extended answers. Differentiation can enhance Boohoo's brand image and customer loyalty. Now that's actually in context with the case study because we had that in the case study. By offering unique trend-setting fashion application, Boohoo can attract customers looking for distinctiveness beyond price. Okay, this is actually comparing to the cost leadership strategy. So it's a nice comparison in the middle of that paragraph. We have a highly loyal customer base and a very long quote from the case study. But it is in context, there's actually a chain of argument in the middle of it, which I suppose um, could be interpreted, we do like that phrase, as differentiation is important in supporting growth in sales and it comes straight back to the hook okay so definitely quoted def there's probably about five chains in there if we count the, count the one in the quote however nice word for a counter argument which is why we've used it twice higher costs of differentiation and potential and potentially a, a narrowing market reach could mean chain of argument they are focusing on some niche aspects of fast fashion. Now, it was in danger of being very textbook, wasn't it? But we've dropped fast fashion on the end for a bit of application. Differentiation often involves higher production and marketing costs, which may only sometimes be recouped through premium prices. Very theory so far, especially in a price sensitive market sort of linked to fast fashion. We need to remember that Boohoo are a budget fast fashion brand, nice context, and might struggle to increase prices. Interpretation of that. The case study mentioned investment in unique designs and high quality materials increases production costs. It just ties all this together nicely, which if passed on to price sensitive customers might damage sales. Back to the hook. So we're talking about maybe three chain of arguments for these first two cost leadership points. I'm thinking we're squeezing up to five there. You can email me if you disagree for differentiation. Overall, let's answer the question. We pop back to the question. We know we need to select um, one. The hook is more important and 
most important. There you go. Okay, so we've used the hook. It's in context with sales of online apparel, growing its online apparel sales. So it's not Shakespeare, thankfully, hated Shakespeare, um, but it does answer the question. Then we need a good justification. You need to understand how many marks are really um, going into your evaluation here. So lots of people, students, will just repeat their arguments and they don't really add anything to it or it's just abstract waffle. Um, if you can't think of anything in context to say, end it here, save your time, go on to the four marker in the second half of the paper or something. Ideally, you're going to be able to justify, aren't you? In here, we're going to badmouth the other option and say why differentiation is more important and it's going to be contextualised and if you've been practicing your mops, your justification will be focused on something in the future. OK, we do look like a little bit of short term versus long term. Uh, you'll see that from the comments from the chief examiner um, for recent um, examiner reports. Although cost leadership can drive volume, nice comparison there. Differentiation aligns better with Boohoo's brand as a trendsetter in fashion, using the case study to justify. It helps sustain long-term brand loyalty and customer engagement, essential in the volatile fashion industry. We know it's changing a lot because we can see how much their sales have dipped. The ongoing trend towards personalization and sustainable fashion, we know that because we've done the research theme, could further justify the importance of differentiation to Boohoo. A future orientated statement if I've ever seen one. Now, it's not a long answer. You should be able to plan, read the case study a little bit and write that in 24 minutes. That's all you have, unless you have the luxury of extra time. But you're only given that if you need it, hey? So here's our answer with our wonderful marking grid. Remember, we're not looking for perfection. We are looking for level four. Here is a rough suggested structure for that and remember your mops is supporting the justification not necessarily a separate paragraph um, and remember if you can't write a mops or justification in context i wouldn't bother writing one really we're not going to give any marks for it so if you think here we're looking for level four is it accurate knowledge throughout supported throughout um, by use of relevant and effective use of business behaviour in context. Well, I think we've nailed that, to be honest with you. Lots of, you know, talking about their customers, what they want to do, the identity of the brand in fast fashion. Um, are they well-developed? Well, I'm not sure if these are well-developed too much. I think they're not bad. That one's about probably um, three chains the others are a little bit better um i'm going to put a little question mark next to that because i don't think it's probably nailed it a hundred percent and i think we're probably up here a little bit so i'm going to put a question mark next to that one as well are we using the quant a bit of a lazy answer to be honest with you could have actually dropped a bit of calculation in there with a cheeky percentage change but the qualitative stuff I felt was probably more important. So I'm going to put cross through that, not that it's a calculate question or a using the data question. Um, so, but I think it's well supported with the judgments as well. So we're talking about, um, we're using evidence in here, volatile fashion industry, um, you know, so that sort of thing is quite important. Trend setting fashion, bringing in a bit of our understanding of the research theme with, you know, sustainability and environmentalism, those sorts of things personalization so a full awareness of validity and significance i think we've sort of covered that pretty well in the justification um comparing the arguments remember we bad mouth the other one and say why our one is is actually the right decision don't just say because it is and then just repeat yourself bad mouth the other one yeah bad mouth is not a very professional term but i'm a dalmatian never mind um and Obviously, we have proposes a solution. Well, the hook in this question isn't so much recommend a strategy. It's recommend which one is the most important. 
most important means you might do a bit of both, hey? Um, so I'm not going to say, overall, I recommend they do this one, not that one, because that wouldn't be answering the question. Hopefully that was useful, everyone, and I um, hope your revision's going well. Happy days.